In this live demonstration, I'm going to be creating Raycomon sequence using loops and conditional statements. So we look at different sequences all the time, uh, from ones like Fibonacci sequence, where we define some starting value and we have some rule of what the subsequent values are going to be, or just a simple arithmetic sequence or geometric, something like that. Uh, we're going to look in here specifically at this sequence called Raycomon sequence. So we're going to start uh, creating our sequence with this little n value equals zero, and then we have rules for how we find all the subsequent pieces in our sequence. So when little n is equal to zero, that's going to be the first term in our sequence, and we're going to define that as zero. Then we're going to increase little n to one. So if we want to know a sub one, well again, we have to look at these rules here. So either uh, the next term in the sequence is going to be determined by the previous term minus n, as long as that term is positive and it's not already in our set, and otherwise it's going to be the previous term plus n uh, as, the, as the next term in the sequence. So here I have a list of uh, the first uh, couple uh, dozen terms that are going to be in this sequence. So we want to do this programmatically using MATLAB. So we can see that these are what the values should be, 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, etc. cetera. Uh, by this rule, we should not have any repeats in the sequence, um, and the first term should be 0, and we're going to follow these rules to assemble our sequence. So going into the MATLAB here, I'm going to start uh, assembling our sequence. So let's, I will define how many, piece, how many uh, elements I want in the sequence first. I'm just going to start small to make sure it's working properly. So I'm going to define uh, big N here as a uh, number of elements in sequence. And once we know that our uh, routine is working, I can increase that and make sure that it agrees with what uh, we already know from the, the given uh, sequence or the first couple dozen elements in the sequence here. Uh, all right, so I'm going to say that then A uh, which is going to be our sequence, the values in our sequence. I'm going to predefine using zeros, uh, just uh, n and one. So let me just run this, make sure we're working so far. And I'm going to do this as a script rather than a function. Uh, so I don't have uh, any function declaration here. Okay, so initially I just want to work for 10 numbers in my sequence. And I'll pre-allocate the size of a. That's what I'm doing in line seven. I'm just going to start it with all zeros and I'll fill it in as I go. So from the rule, a sub zero is going to be the first term in our sequence. That is just zero. And then we'll follow this, these other rules. Either we, we take our previous value minus n or our previous value plus n to define it using these conditions here. The, the, the next number in our sequence can't already be in the sequence and it can't be negative. Uh, and if one of those is not going to be true, then we're going to do this previous value plus n as we'll see in a second. Right, so back to the MATLAB here. We have to be careful uh, when we're using MATLAB versus other programming languages like uh, Python or C that we want to keep in mind that MATLAB is a one indexing language. So when we are defining a vector or an array of values, uh, the first value in it is, is one. Whereas in other languages, the first value is the zeroth value. And right here, the way that this sequence is defined, we have a little bit of a mismatch that might often come up, that the sequence is defined from zero and then subsequent one, two, three, four, five, but MATLAB is going to define from one, two, three, four, five. So we just have to make sure that uh, we can't start with the zeroth index, we must start at the first. So what does this mean? Well, uh, actually, if we just look at A at the moment, the first value should be zero, and that is when n is little n is equal to zero. So actually the first value in a corresponds to little n equals one. So actually we're already uh, defined there. So what we need to fill in here is the rest of the values here properly. So uh, we know how many values we need to fill up because we know right now we'll have 10, we'll increase that later. So we can do this as a for loop because we know how many values we're going to need. So I'm going to say for n equals, I'll actually go 1 to big N, so uh, 1 to 10 uh, for, for 
start to start and then I'll make big N uh, larger once this is working properly. Okay, so remember the first value in A actually corresponds to little n equal zero. So the way I'm going to index this is because little n in this loop is going to start at one, uh, the first value in A is already defined. That is zero because that corresponds to little n equaling uh, zero. Um, so what I need to define here is I'm going to use this notation on the left side that the nth plus first term in A, that's how I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll be defining that. And actually, I'll, I'll hold off on a second here. Okay, so little n is equal to uh, 1 when we start this loop. So the first thing we're going to fill in is actually the second value in A. That's why I'm going to be doing this A of n plus 1. Right, so 0 is the first term, so now the second term is what is going to be next. But once again, the second term in A corresponds to little n is 1. The first term in A corresponded to little n equals 0. We do, we do want to keep that in mind here. So the second value in A, we want to, it's going to be uh, the previous value minus n, as long as that value is not in the set, nor is it negative. So let's see what happens there. All right, so the previous value in the set is actually a of n. All right, so it's a little bit confusing here, but we are going to be defining the n plus first value. So the previous value, the way we're indexing here, is a of n. And again, that's because little n starts at 0 rather than 1. All right, so that's my previous value. So let's just say here, so n equals 1. Just want to test this out. So a of n is 0. And that makes sense because that's the first value. And the first thing I need to de define is my second value. So I want to see what is that minus n. Again, looking at the rule here, as long as these two things are true, the next value in my set, a n, is the previous value minus n. All right, so let's see what that gives me. That will be negative 1 when little n is 1. But if we look at the rule here, uh, it's this value unless it's negative. So it has to be greater than 1. So like when little n is 1, this is not going to be true. Right? So if this thing is true, if it's positive, then I will declare a of n plus 1 equal to this. Right, now we already know for the for little n equals 1, the second term in our sequence, that is false. And uh, just so we can test this out, I'll just set n equal to 1, which would be the first time we go through this loop. So it would be negative 1, oops, negative 1, which is not greater than 0. So this should not trigger. So we have the other rule, if that's false, and if it's not in the set, I'll add that in a second here. So already, uh, that's this piece is not true. So otherwise, it's the previous value plus n. And so I can put this in. So my current value is that. And let me indent this properly and get rid of this. I'm not going to run this program yet. I just want to make sure it's going to work for lil n equals 1, which again is the second element in my set. So if I run just this block, what happens to my a vector? Right, the first one is always 0. The second one now, it says, is 1. And let me just kind of step through uh, the loop to make sure it's working. So I'm going to temporarily display my vector a on each iteration of my loop. Right, so I'm going to put a break here to, to see how this is working. And I'll just hit run now. So you see it stops here. It's going to wait for me to do something. All right, so little n is 1, and I'm on the first iteration of my loop. And if I hit step, it will go 1, and it shows uh, my value of a right now. So 0 and 1, so far so good. And I'm still on the first iteration of my loop. I can hit continue and it'll run until it comes back to that what we call a breakpoint, that little red dot. Right, so little n is equal to 2. Let's see what happens. 
Right? So now 0, 1, 3. Right? Little n is equal to 2. I filled in the third value in my vector should be 3. Let me continue this. And now the fourth, it's filled in 0, 1, 3, 6. And I can keep doing this so I can really see one at a time what's happening here. 0, 1, 3, 6, 2. Uh, if I look at uh, what is expected, 0, 1, 3, 6, 2. So far, so good. Right, continue, step, continue, step. Uh, okay, so here we have a problem so far. I have 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7, and it's giving me 1. This is 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7. 13 should be the next one, uh, since I, I know what the sequence should look like. Well, I haven't included yet that not only must the value be positive, but also the value cannot already be in my set. So I'm going to have to modify what this loop is doing. Uh, let me get rid of this breakpoint, just uh, run the whole thing and see. Again, it's not going to give me the right values because 1 is repeated, uh, 7 is repeated. It's not, it's not doing the right things yet. So I have to add that logic in. What I'm going to have to check is, is this a of n minus n not only positive, but does it already appear in my set? So let me see where the, the first time this is a problem is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the 7th uh, when uh, little n is the 7th value. So that's actually when n is 6. Right. So again, that's when I get 1, and this is going to trigger. But again, uh, n is already in my set. Um, so what I want to look at is, well, what's my set so far? I can look at the first value of a through the nth value of a. And so I have 0, 1, 3, 6, 7, uh, 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, and 7 already in my set because I'm defining the next value in my set. So what I can look at is does this number, I'll just uh, put it down here for the moment, so find does this appear in my set. So find all the places this is true. So let me run just this. Right, so we see here 0, 1, it, it is true at one location. Now if I do a find there, if I run this, it's going to tell me where that's true. So this says yes, it does appear previously. Now what happens if uh, little n is 3? Let's just uh, see what happens here. Right, when we're filling in for little n is 3, and I run this, I get 0, 1, and 3. And then the next term should be here, uh, a 0. Uh, so actually, it should, it should not trigger anyway. Let me try a different one. Let's say n is 4. Right, so my sequence so far, I have 0, 1, 3, and 6. Uh, here, should it be 2? And we see that nowhere, nowhere is that the case, that uh, 2 does not appear anywhere in the previous set. So in that case, find gives us this empty vector. So as long as it doesn't find it anywhere in the sequence so far, then it's OK for line 12 to trigger. So I'm going to copy here. But the problem is, um, when I do this and, I have to evaluate a logical 1 or 0 and another logical 1 or 0. So right now, this is OK. If I run that, that gives me a 1. But if I run this, well, that's giving me an empty matrix. That's not a 0 or a 1. So I need to do something that will make this a 0 or a 1. So I can check this, I can use this isEmpty function here. So isEmpty, I'll ignore this for now. Uh, there's better ways to do this, but I'll, I'll do it this way for right now. So this should run if I have an empty matrix. What isEmpty does is it checks the, the, the argument in here, and if it's empty, it returns a 1. And otherwise, it returns a 0. So if I run this, I get a 1. So now the statement 12 will trigger as long as the next value is positive. That's what this is checking. And 
as long as it doesn't appear in my sequence so far. So I'm always checking up to the nth element in my sequence. Right? So as long as that's empty, uh, if both of these statements are true, then that is going to, um, it says, yes, this is the next value in the sequence. If even one of these is false, then it goes to this other branch and says, no, it should be the previous value plus n rather than minus n. Right, so let's see what happens now with this extra little bit of logic in here, how it's going to affect uh, our sequence. Right, so running this now with this extra bit here, 0, 1, 3, 6, 2, 7, 13, 20, 12, 21, 11. If we do a quick comparison here, um, 7, 13, 20, 7, 13, 20, 12, 21, 11. And we see here, yes, uh, those are all matching. And uh, let me do this just on the outside so it's not printing so often here. All right, so I, it appears to be working so far. And what I can do now is uh, I can up this value of big N so I can get more numbers in my sequence. Um, I just wanted to start small so I wasn't running a whole bunch of numbers when I didn't know if it was working or not. So let me just do this for 30 numbers now. So the way I coded this, it's still going to work. I don't need to change anything else because the for loop I have will now go from one to 30. And again, it's gonna keep checking these rules uh, over and over again uh, and building up my sequence. So if I run it now, I'm gonna get 30 values. That's scrolling up, it's printing out my entire list of numbers here. And I can increase it further if I wanted. Let me just do 50 and run it. And it builds my entire sequence. So in this problem, what we had to be uh, careful was uh, one, the way the sequence was defined was starting at zero. However, MATLAB is going to start at one. So if you look at how I'm indexing here, the A of one is going to automatically be zero by the way I pre-allocate my vector A. And then uh, to the left of the equal of the single equal sign, I'm using this N plus one so that when N is one, it's going to actually define A of two, A of three, A of four, and it uses the previous value to define the next value here. So we have to account for that mismatch between mathematically starting at zero, but building our vector starting at the first element and going forward. Uh, what we also saw here is we know how many elements in this one we need to fill in, so a for loop was appropriate. And we can kind of slowly build up how we are going to be solving the problem by adding in and checking what's happening inside our for loop as we go. And we can check for multiple things being true using this uh, double equal sign here. But we want to keep in mind we have to be checking one scalar value that will evaluate to one or zero and another scalar value that will be one or zero. So we have to do operations like this is empty to make sure that the thing on the right hand side will evaluate to a zero or a one and not some other number or it's not going to evaluate to uh, a vector uh, of values. It's just going to be a single zero or a single one when we do um, go to completion.